One of the most common questions anxiety sufferers have is, how do I get myself to stop having an intrusive thought? Whether that intrusive thought is related to a physical symptom, whether it's related to depersonalization, derealization, where you start thinking, what is existence? You start getting this existential anxiety. You start wondering what's real, what's not, if the symptom is there or not, and you're just wondering, what can I do to just silence my mind? Well, in this video, I'm gonna really break down how to stop an intrusive thought because it's one of the most common questions I get from anxiety sufferers. And if you can understand a little bit more, not just about the mechanics of anxiety, which I'm gonna break down, but understanding the mechanics of the mind, that's really gonna help you long-term, not only overcome this, but to make sure you go on living fully and freely without falling back into the cycle again. So with that said, let's get started. So in this video, if you're dealing with physical symptoms, if you're getting depersonalization, derealization, I'm not gonna really go down that rabbit hole. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about intrusive thoughts, but if you really wanna know how to overcome these symptoms, how to desensitize your nervous system, basically what's happened is that your nervous system has gotten very sensitized. And this is why every time you go to your doctor, they say everything is fine. They look at your tests and they're like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you're talking about. Everything is fine. A lot of it is because there's nothing actually medically wrong with you, but your nervous system is very sensitized. And what you need to do is desensitize your nervous system. This also gives you a roadmap of understanding how the recovery journey looks like. So this way you have proper expectations. If you want to know, I'll put a link down below to the desensitization blueprint. This really shows you the mechanics. It shows you what to do to overcome it, how the roadmap is, how to avoid certain pitfalls, and really help you focus on long-term freedom. But in this video, I'm going to be breaking down how to stop an intrusive thought. And like I say, the great thing about overcoming anxiety is that it doesn't just teach you the mechanics of anxiety, but if you do recovery correctly, you actually focus on understanding the mind. You get to understand how the mind works essentially. And basically this is how it works. In the mind, you can't stop a thought. A lot of people try to just stop having a certain thought and that active engagement reinforces the thought. What they're doing is that a lot of people are doing what they would typically do in real life. If they don't want something, they stop it. They run away from it. But the mechanics of the mind are very different, which is if you try to run away from a thought, it's actually reinforcing it. You can't run away from a thought. You can't say, don't think about a pink elephant. The first thing you're gonna be thinking about is a pink elephant. So the first thing to understand is that the laws of the mind, how the mind works, is not the same as what you would see in you know, the physical world. And one of the best ways to understand that is to really differentiate between thoughts and thinking. Now, I really want you to take a step back and ask yourself, okay, what's the difference between a thought and thinking, right? Because a lot of people combine the two. And if you can understand the differences, well, it's gonna make a lot of sense on how to stop a thought. So basically thoughts come and go. Your mind is regurgitating a bunch of stuff. This has to do a lot with your background, what you've learned, what you've read online, basically anything from the past and just throws things at you. That's something you have no control over. Thoughts you have zero control over, it does not matter. Your mind has came up with a million bazillion different things that you've just simply ignored that's just came across your mind. And even sometimes you'll think about things. You'll be like, why did I even come up with that? That's such a weird thing. The mind just has its ways of just throwing things and seeing what sticks. Now also understand the mind is designed to protect you. The brain is designed to protect you. Same with the body. So it's gonna throw things in terms of danger. So it's gonna have more of a negativity bias. This is in general, anxiety or not. But thinking, however, thinking is an active process. Think about rumination, right? What is rumination? Rumination is just having the same thought over and over again. So recognize between the two of these is that one you have no control over. Thinking, however, you do have control over it. It's active engagement. If you have a thought come in, what if my symptom is this? What if it's that? If you're choosing to engage, yeah, what if it is this? What if the doctor missed something? Let me look online. Oh, look, this person was struggling with this. Oh my God, what if that's happening with me? You're engaging with the thought. Now, here's something interesting. Whenever you engage with the thought, you're telling the brain that this thought is important. Now, if the brain is focused on helping you survive and you're giving it validation to a thought, well, what it does is that it reinforces the thought. It says, hey, this thought is important, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this thought again so that Sean can prepare. So here's the recap. Because you're experiencing nervous system sensitization and because of this, you're in this constant fight or flight response, your brain is gonna be coming up with bad case scenarios as a way to protect you. These are thoughts. 
This has a lot to do with your state. So that you have no control over. Thinking, however, is active engagement. It's actually using, utilizing that thought and engaging with it. And what that does is that that creates a habit. It creates a feedback loop. Now what happens is that as you're ruminating, now you're constantly thinking about it. So two things happen over time. Thoughts happen because you're sensitized, but also the engagement with the thought creates the cycle that gets stronger and stronger. Essentially, you don't even need to think about it. It automatically goes on its own. So it's really important to understand this factor because there's two components, like I say. Number one, you're sensitized. Your brain is going to think about the worst case scenario, right? Think about it this way. If you're in a life or death situation, does do you want your brain to think about you know the positive stuff, the optimistic stuff, or does it want you to focus on the negative stuff so that maybe you could find a way to fix this, right? Maybe you could find some way, if you're looking at all the bad case scenarios, you can know what to avoid. So one part is sensitization. The second part is people develop a habit of constantly thinking about it because they don't understand the mechanics of anxiety. You might be experiencing heart palpitations, dizziness, brain fog, the depersonalization, derealization. You might have a thought that you're scared of. You might feel like you might actually indulge in this scary, very negative thought. And so what you do is you run away, you react in fear. Now what's happening is that you're developing a habit because your nervous system is sensitized, you're developing a habit where now you're reinforcing the thought because you're engaging with the thought. So what do you do to overcome this? Well, number one, you have to understand thoughts are thoughts. Your mind is gonna be going into this negative bias because you're sensitized and because you've developed a habit. So understanding the brain is gonna look at all the bad case scenarios understanding that you're really not your thoughts here. And number two, understand the mechanics of anxiety. If you can understand how anxiety creates these symptoms, how anxiety creates these intrusive thoughts, the depersonalization, derealization, the weird emotions, and really understanding that just because you have a thought doesn't mean you're gonna engage with it, right? You still have autonomy. No matter how strong the thought is, it might feel like, oh, I might lose control, but that's just anxiety trying to find ways to stay alive. So once you really understand the mechanics of anxiety and understand desensitization, well, then the focus is on how to unlearn this habit. The habit meaning constantly engaging with the thought. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna stop engaging with the thought. There's nothing to engage, right? Even if a thought comes up, you don't need to do anything about it. A lot of people ask me, Sean, but how do I like not do anything about this thought? Well, you have to understand, you have 60,000 other thoughts that come throughout the day that you don't engage with. It's the exact same thing. It's about making all the thoughts just a level playing field and reacting the same as you do with all the other thoughts. Now, does this make the thought go away? No. But what this does over time is that this breaks this habit, this feedback loop of your brain constantly coming up with these thoughts. And so then what happens as a consequence is that the brain starts thinking, this isn't an important thought. Sean's not engaging with it. So if Sean's not engaging with it, I'm not gonna give him this thought. But what happens is anxiety sufferers have a hard time doing that because they have a hard time feeling uncomfortable. They feel like if a thought's coming or they're experiencing a thought, they need to do something about it in order to stop a thought. It doesn't work that way. The second you engage, it reinforces it. So you have to learn to sit with the discomfort and to understand that this what if game that you're playing in your head is actually reinforcing it all. And there's a difference between what if situations and what's happening in real life. So here are some things that I did that really helped me on my journey. Number one, if I had a what if scenario, I had an action plan. I said, look, if it is this, I will deal with it later. But right now I got to focus on this, 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 and this. And I made other things more important in my life than that thought. The world around me was not dictated around whether I had that thought or not. My focus now was, okay, on living life. And if something comes up, I will deal with it when it happens. But in the meantime, it's just a what if scenario and I don't need to figure it out. What happened was over time is that sure, the thought would pop up, but it would have less of an emotional punch. It wouldn't hit me as hard. And over time, I started realizing this was just a made up scenario in my head. It didn't matter how real it felt. Well, the truth was, is that this was nothing. It was just a what if thought. And I was, uh, as I was going through the recovery journey, the symptoms actually morphed a little bit. The thoughts changed. But once I understood the mechanics of the mind, I was able to respond to all of it. And what happened long term is that I focused on overcoming this and going back to living. So again, as a final recap, understand you can't stop a thought and that there's a difference between thoughts and thinking and 
understanding that you're gonna have a lot of negative thoughts right now because your nervous system is sensitized and also taking accountability of the fact that you've reinforced the cycle too, right? You probably didn't do it willingly or at least knowingly, but understanding that whenever you engage in a thought, it reinforces it. So you've developed this habit, which means overcoming this isn't gonna happen overnight. What you have to do is unlearn this habit. And part of that is learning to actively not engage and recognizing that they're just thoughts and it's just adrenaline burning itself out. So I hope this video makes sense. I hope it clarifies a lot of things. If you really wanna know more about how to overcome it, I'll put some resources down below. If you really want me and my team to help guide you through the recovery journey, you can hit a link down below and apply for mentorship. But the biggest key is what I wanna emphasize what I said earlier in this video is, you're gonna to have to learn to sit with the discomfort. And you're gonna also have to realize when you're not engaging with it and when you are engaging with the thought. Sometimes people have a hard time recognizing am I engaging with the thought or am I not? Especially in the beginning. This is why I feel like having a guide really helps on your recovery journey. So find somebody in your community, someone who really helps in this specific problem and have them help you through the journey, especially because when you're dealing with these intrusive thoughts, it almost feels like uh, it feels like a haze. You don't know which direction to go and really have them guide you along the way as long as you start building momentum, as you start building confidence, you can become your own guide. And like I said, if you want that to be me and my team, you have to apply down below. We only do it uh, application only um, because uh, we, we like working with a small group of people. But with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.